Welcome to Eye on You. When we talk about criminal jurisprudence, we ought to think of the society to which we belong. Law which is based on human behavior varies from society to society. However, all civilization leads to a common goal of safeguarding peaceful coexistence of its citizens, so that each one can have a sense of security and be able to live comfortably with dignity. Therefore, it gives rise to one's behavior towards society, such as what he ought to do and what he ought not to do within the boundary of law. Regardless, when one acts, it has reflection on society. This reflection may create imbalances when the society is put to an imbalanced position by action or inaction of its citizen. Law will be invoked to correct the imbalances. In fact, it deals with the rights, obligations, and their enforcement by adjudications of courts. The result of adjudic adjudications is justice, and such system of justice can be called criminal jurisprudence. It is our great honor to invite Dr. Raymond Zhang to join our show to have a brief discussion on criminal jurisprudence. Dr. Zhang is the CEO of YF Institute, as well as the visiting professor at the University of the Assumption of the Philippines. Let's welcome Dr. Zhang to our show. Hello, Dr. Zhang. Welcome to our show today. Hello, Eunice. Hello, Edward. Hello. So um, Hong Kong's judiciary has a very high regard internationally in terms of its integrity, independence, and the professionals and skills. So, but justice is a very delicate plan. It has to be nurtured, protected, and cared for. So on the other hand, criminal justice is a very complex social institution which regulates potential alleged and actual um, criminal activities uh, within procedural limits supposed to protect people from wrongful doings or wrongful con convictions. So Dr. Chang, in your opinion, what is the bottom line of the criminal justice? Well, I guess every time when we talk about the bottom line, we, we go for the elements first, which means the, the policemen, I mean the police, the, the, um, the, the courts and the judges, the corrections, as well as the prosecution. So, so when we talk about the police, of course, these are the people who actually try and maintain the order liberty of the city. And these are the people as well who are sort of having that state monopoly of, of using force, legally using force. So that's why we have to be very clear about these people. Who are they? And judges as well. These are the people who interpret the law for us. So, so if, you, if you have all these people interpreting the law in the right way, in the, in the logical way, in the culturally acceptable way, that would be much better. And these would be the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So as a Hong Konger, we are very proud of the fact that um, Hong Kong is the safest place in the world. Mm -hmm. However, of course, there is also uh, a lot of crimes in Hong Kong. And recently, we can see that there's a rise of um, internet scam uh, in our society. So in your opinion, uh, how do you feel about the uh, effectiveness of um, the criminal justice in Hong Kong? Well, um, very often than not, people talk about increasing public spending in, in fighting crime. But, but if you look at the city, I, I mean, as, a, as an academic, mm -hmm. I, I would actually look at crime from a different perspective, from the cultural perspective, in, in, in a way that it is somehow functional in a city, in a society. So if you look at it that way, then cities like Hong Kong or places like Hong Kong, which is a collectivist society, well, the only thing that you probably have to do is to increase the cost of crime or the cost of committing crime, which means the moment they realize, wow, it's cost that much or, or crime would cost that much, they'll probably well be deterred in a way. Mm -hmm. But look at, look at other cities around the world. Let's say cities that are full of um, individualists, it would be so difficult for us to simply increase the cost of crime for them because the moment they think, well, they don't agree with the law, well, they'll just do it. Mm. So, so the thing is, if you look at Hong Kong, it's not about the city now. We're talking about the generation. Um, the last generation probably would be more like conformists. But for the newer generation, I wouldn't say they're conformists. So in, in a way, we have to sort of educate them and, and not increase the public spending because that's probably useless in a way. So in that sense, in order to sort of curb crime or sort of, sort of make the city safer, education would be the sole key. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, um, in, the, in the pandemic, we are facing lots of difficulties. As you said, uh, many people, um, they ask for uh, increasing the expenditure on the on the on giving up more more courtrooms or hiring more judges uh, to ensure that uh, there is no no justice delay. But um, some of the cases back in two thousand nineteen for the for the riot cases they haven't been brought to court yet. 
So um, do you think that um, we should do something? What can we do more for the criminal justice to make sure it, it, can, it has to, do, to be done? Well, if you look at other, other cities around the world, other places around the world, UK actually piloted the first virtual court back in 2021. Uh, Singapore, the United States, Australia, they have similar things as well. But, but out of all these things, the same issue, um, well, it, it actually boils down to the same issue. We are short of judges. We're short of people running the criminal justice system. Let's say you go to a restaurant and all of a sudden you have so many costumers coming in. What are you going to do? Are you going to hire a few more chefs? That's the problem. You can't hire chefs right away. So, so you still have to take time in order to digest those cases, which means the, the best answer would be patience. Mm -hmm. But waiting is, is maybe it's not the best way. Because for, for the judges, we, we always say that um, um, the remunerations, uh, the package or the, or the benefit package, is, it cannot be compared to the private practice. So it's hard, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an art. How do we attract more people to be judges? Yeah. But, but in terms of waiting, well, there are two bunches of people waiting. The first bunch of people, those who are waiting to be judged, and the judges, right? Mm -hmm. So so if you're waiting to be judged, I mean, well, you have to pay for what you've done. So you have to wait. <laughs> uh, so um, in that sense, the waiting thing, it's not that, not that much of an issue. Mm -hmm. But getting people to become judges or to be involved in the criminal justice system goes back to the culture thing. And that also goes back to the first question, which is the building blocks, right? I mean, I mean the, um, at the bottom line, right? So are they willing to serve? in this city? Do they agree with the, the core values and the key values of the city? If they don't, then of course they're not going to serve. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing here is to tell people or educate people why would they have to respect the core values? Why are these core values that valuable? So the Hong Kong criminal justice system is a very fascinating structure because um, the criminal justice system is originally based um, on the Britons and therefore is quite different from uh, what we found in the mainland, what we found in China in the nowadays. So after, after 97, the basic law provides us the Hong Kong's existing legal system that shall continue after the Hong Kong's um, sovereignty going back to China. So, but the existing institutions are designed, are destined for dramatic changes because of the policy of one country, two systems. So as such, that's the Hong Kong criminal justice system start diverging from Britain's. Well, put it this way, somebody got married, so they moved out. And instead of living with the parents, they moved out and started their own family. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that if you live together, you share the same culture. So you understand them, you, you know what exactly what they're doing. But the moment you live in, in a separate place. And in this case, it's the, it's the sovereignty of Hong Kong being handed over back to China in 1997. It's normal that we'll see this kind of a divergence. Well, given the fact that it's now, what, 25 years after the handover, do you really expect that there'll be no difference between the two places? I mean, even, let's say, instead of looking at government, okay, let's look at just a family, a very normal family. Let's say somebody lived in Hong Kong, um, they, 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 they had relatives, in the, in the UK, they've not been seeing each other for like 20, 20 years. Well, there would be difference, of course. So it, does that mean that Hong Kong is diverting away from the UK? Why don't you put it the other way around? UK is diverting away from Hong Kong, right? In fact, these differences will always be there. And it's not that someone is diverting from or away from the other. Um, if I see, if I look at the data, uh, uh, according to the immigration data, mm -hmm. around nine, nine, 94,000 of people have, have left Hong Kong in 2022. So um, we don't know whether these departure are uh, um, temporary or they are, they are permanent. So how do you see this situation and how would you explain it, whether because of the criminal justice system or because of something else, because of some other reasons that they choose to leave Hong Kong? Well, in short, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's all about understanding. Um, let's say, for example, nine out of 10 Americans, black Americans, consider the criminal justice system in America to be unfair. Now, now we don't have that kind of account. Well, there are people out there complaining about the CGS, complaining about the system, saying that it's not fair. Now, for example, for me, I, I was in, well, I, I migrated to the States back in the 70s, and then I came back. Um, if you look at the States, um, the, the fact that every time when there is an election, the number that I've been talking about, the nine out of 10, well, which, is, which boils down to some, some like 87% of the black people, went down to like 
Why? Because they're trying to make everybody happy right before the election. What about the white? Now, the white, we're talking about 60% of the people saying that the, the criminal, ju criminal justice system is not fair, goes down to some, some like 30% right before the elections. So if you tell me it has to do with the country, I'll tell you it has to do with the politics. Okay. If you tell me, uh, well, it's fair over there, it's not as fair in Hong Kong, I would tell you to look around will probably have the fairest criminal justice systems around the world. And that is Hong Kong. Mm. <laughs> so thank you very much, Dr. Chang, today. So um, we, you. we learned so much about um, criminal justice in Hong Kong. So thank you very much. Thank for you, Eunice. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you again, Yawar, so very soon. Sure. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you.